Deep Research in Perplexity is one of the most advanced research AI models out there designed for serious analysis. It helps you move far beyond surface level answers to build structured evidence-based insights from analyzing complex patterns and emerging trends to uncovering real user pain points to integrating your own reports, PDFs and data sets with live web data. But the real power of Perplexity's deep research lies in how you use it and in understanding how to maximize its features. So in this video, I'll show you three powerful techniques to get more out of deep research, techniques that make it think deeper, connect data smarter, and deliver insights that will truly enhance your research or analysis. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with our first use case. This one is all about structuring your deep research prompt in a way that maximizes the quality of what you get back. In this example, we're focusing on reasoning and on defining clear deliverables so that perplexity knows exactly what to produce. Most people type a short question and expect meaningful insights. But if you want real research level output, you need to give perplexity structure, a clear topic, a defined scope, explicit reasoning instructions and specific deliverables. So for our prompt here, we've clearly defined the topic, the objective, the scope and time frame, and then focused our reasoning instructions to make sure the model connects causes and effects logically. Then I add reasoning instructions and so that it can explain how the causes reinforce or contradict each other, distinguish between short term and long term effects and highlight conflicting viewpoints between analysts and founders. This transforms the response from a list of reasons into a deeper, more analytical discussion. And finally, the part that makes the biggest difference, the deliverables. This is where you tell perplexity what kind of structure you want back. I ask it to produce a ranked list of causes with reasoning, a comparison table across technical market and leadership issues, a stage matrix showing when each factor appears, a bar chart visualizing frequency, a contradiction summary comparing expert versus founder perspectives, and a CSV output for further analysis. When you add this level of structure, perplexity can bring back some seriously extensive data and results. So let's look at the output. You can see how perplexity has followed the deep research structure we set. It's analyzed over a hundred credible sources and produced a full evidence-based synthesis. Here we've got a ranked summary of the top 10 reasons AI startups fail to scale. And you can see how each cause is broken down clearly. It starts with product market fit and leadership and strategic decision failures. Each one includes why it matters, real evidence, and those interaction chains showing how one weakness leads to the next. It's not just summarizing, it's reasoning through the entire system of failure. Then we've got the comparison table, and this part is really well structured. You can see the categories, core issues, stages affected, examples, and sources all laid out side by side. Next comes the failure stage matrix, and this one gives you a time timeline view of failure across startup stages. Each stage lists the main causes, the typical consequences, and even a real example. And then we've got the visual summary and the bar chart highlighting how product market fit sits right at the top, followed closely by leadership, organizational readiness, and data quality. The design is clean and minimal, so it's easy to interpret at a glance or drop straight into a presentation. And if you click on the generated file or head over to the assets tab, you'll see it's also generated downloadable CSV files. These contain the full structured data set with columns for stage, leading cause, impact severity, and consequence, meaning you can export, filter, and use the data in your own reports, dashboards, or analysis tools. What's great about this output is that it doesn't just explain why AI startups fail, it gives you a framework to investigate, compare, and visualize the patterns yourself. It's evidence-rich, visually structured, and ready to reuse in future projects. This is where deep research really shines. It doesn't stop at insights. It delivers structured assets you can actually build on. Okay, so let's apply this in our second use case. Here we want to find out what small business owners actually struggle with when trying to get their first 100 customers online. And we are going to use social sources to get perplexity to pull real insights from the exact spaces where those discussions are happening. Here's how to do it. First click on deep research mode, then we will go to set sources, turn off web and turn on social. And now let's add our prompt, conduct deep research to identify and summarize the real pain points small business owners discuss when trying to attract their first 100 customers online. We ask it to focus on social discussions and include short direct quotes or paraphrases with links, apply qualitative analysis to categorize findings into recurring themes. And just like we did in the first case, we specify the exact reasoning details and deliverables 
questions, so Perplexity knows how to structure its thinking and what to produce. We ask it for ranked summaries, tables, and CSV outputs, so the results come back as structured, usable research, not just another list of insights. So let's look at the output. You can see how Perplexity has taken the full prompt and turned it into a proper qualitative analysis, not just listing what people say, but grouping hundreds of real founder discussions into clear recurring pain points. It's pulled insights directly from Reddit and business forums, and you can see how each theme includes what the pain point is, why it happens, and even recurring behavioral patterns that explain how one challenge leads to another. The structure is exactly what we asked for, a numbered summary of key pain points, everything from customer acquisition, cost inefficiency, to marketing overwhelm, trust barriers, and platform dependency. Then below that, it gives us a ranked table showing cause, frequency, and real examples from verified sources. So this isn't theory. These are real founders describing what's actually happening in their businesses. And finally, the synthesis section at the end ties everything together, explaining the deeper behavioral patterns, things like the bootstrap paradox, the product first mindset, and the platform dependency trap that make these problems so persistent across years and industries. And again, if we go to our assets tab, you can download the results as a CSV file. So as you can see, you can get a full qualitative study, complete with real examples and clear ranked insights you can build on. For our third use case, we're going to use Perplexity's deep research by combining it with one of its most powerful features, spaces. This is where deep research really shows its full potential because instead of conducting its research and analysis in isolation, you can make it think with your own resources and data set. Spaces let you upload your own PDFs, notes, or reports, and then merge them with deep research to produce analysis that's not only accurate, but completely contextual, aligned with your own material and data. In this example, I've created a space called Generative AI Startups, Opportunities and Funding Challenges. I've uploaded reports from Sequoia, McKinsey, CB Insights, and BCG. And I've also added live web links from TechCrunch and MIT Technology Review, so this space already contains a rich data set before we even start the deep research. Now, before running deep research, I set custom instructions inside the space, so Perplexity always knows how to think and what structure to follow. Here's what I tell it. Use the uploaded PDFs as the primary source. Supplement with live 2023 to 2025 data from credible sites. Apply causal reasoning to explain why and how factors interact. Highlight contradiction and structure all responses with tables, visuals, and synthesis summaries. This way, every query I run in this space automatically follows my preferred logic. No need to rewrite the setup each time. Next, I upload my two CSV files, one tracking AI startup funding and survival rates, and the other showing how those patterns evolve across different investment stages. These files include details on average funding, valuations, survival rates, and stage-based investment trends. Now here's the prompt I run inside this space. Integrate insights from the uploaded reports in this space. Use the two uploaded data sets to show how funding patterns, sector focus, and investment stages have shaped the survival and scaling of generative AI startups. Then I specify the deliverables, a key insight summary highlighting funding and survival relationships, two charts, a scatter plot showing average funding versus survival rate, and a line chart showing funding by stage over time, plus a one-line conclusion explaining what the trend reveals about investor behavior. So let's look at what deep research produced here. Right away, you can see how it's pulled everything together into a full analytical report, not just data points, but interpretation. The executive summary clearly lays out the paradox. While investor confidence in AI remains strong, higher funding actually correlates with lower survival rates. That's exactly what the scatter plot shows, a sharp inverse relationship between average funding and survival. You can see the key insights summary ranks the causes clearly. AI infrastructure startups receive the highest funding but show the weakest survival, while education AI performs the best with the smallest funding average. It even quantifies that relationship, noting a negative correlation of minus 0.74, which is remarkably strong. Then we have stage-wise funding trends. You can see how Series A and B funding levels dropped significantly after 2023, while later stage funding, especially Series C, stayed more stable. What's impressive here is how deep research connects the visuals to reasoning. It explains that the market's moving from broad experimentation towards selective scaling, and it links that directly to survival rates, sector performance, and even investor psychology. It doesn't stop at the charts either. The text goes deeper, showing how education AI's success comes from small, 
focused products with clear ROI, while infrastructure companies face complexity, high costs, and slow monetization cycles. And at the end, it summarizes everything into a clear conclusion. Overall, it's a great example of how combining spaces with deep research produces layered analysis, data, visuals, reasoning, and real-world context, all in one place. And because my space already includes all those uploaded reports and live web links, deep research doesn't just analyze numbers, it connects them with insights from industry leaders and current market data. So that's how you can unlock the full power of deep research in perplexity by learning how to control your sources, structure your prompts, and even combine your own data sets and reports inside spaces. Hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next one.